Hello everyone, let's take a look at the MetaHuman Body customization through Blender by starting with a static mesh. Now in the previous video we did the process entirely in Unreal Engine, today we are going to do it in Blender which has a couple more pros and obviously a couple cons, the main one being you need to know a little bit of Blender and it's a longer process because we gotta go outside of the engine. So first and foremost what we need to do is we gotta export both the skeletal mesh for our asset for the metahuman body proportions that we're using in this case mine is uh, this one and we also need to export whatever static mesh we are using i think my static mesh is somewhere around here but the static mesh that you're going to be end up using for your cloth so once you have those done we need to export it again, we bring it into Blender, we're gonna try and avoid fingers again as usual, and we're gonna transfer weights. So let's jump into Blender, and this is what we got in Blender. This is the MetaHuman preview with its armature, that if we click on the armature, and up here to the left we switch into post mode, and we click on anything and press R, we are gonna be able to bend it, we can see that this is working. And then right next to it we have our piece of cloth. Now I moved it away, it was imported at zero, I just moved it away so we could see the differences. And now we're going to place it right there. So the process here in Blender is actually fairly simple. We need to apply two modifiers to the cloth. The very first one here in modifiers is the little, um, little button here with the wrench. We're going to add modifier. This is uh, Blender 4.3, so it has this new search bar. And in this case, we're going to search for data transfer. Now data transfer is this modifier here. And what it's going to do is it's going to essentially transfer the way painting from one mesh to another. So the source is going to be our MetaHuman preview. And what this is going to do is in mix mode, we're going to leave replace, which is perfectly fine. But we need to enable vertex data, open it up, vertex groups. And that's all we need to do. Everything else is perfectly fine. What we're going to do now is click generate data. And now that it generated all the data layers, we can see here in the vertex groups, effectively, what we just told the engine is, hey, move those vertex weight painting from the mesh of the metahuman to our cloth. Now the second uh, modifier that we need to apply here is called an armature. Now the armature is essentially a skeleton. And again, on the object, we're going to choose the eyedropper and pick, see how it doesn't let me pick anything else? It just, it just knows that it, it is a uh, skeleton or an armature in this case. We're gonna pick that. That's all I need to do. It's gonna be bind, um, it's gonna bind two vertex groups that we just transferred, so that's perfectly fine. And now, if we click here, and we go into post mode, and we move this, we're gonna see that they are both moving. And that's awesome. Once again, the same as our previous process, neck one, neck two, and head do not have any way painting. So if we wish to change that, and again, if we want to see uh, the bones more clearly, we can go as we are in post mode, we can go here to the top right, armature overlays, and we can put this like that. And we can now see that, for example, uh, this is out, and uh, if I can find upper arm, there we go. This kind of things that are happening here are Blender glitches in the viewport. This is, this is not mean that our transfer weight was wrong. This is just a uh, glitch in Blender's viewport. We'll see that it works perfectly fine in Unreal. And I mean this down here, obviously. The neck, again, same as we did in Unreal, we need to remove the weight painting from the arms or add weight painting with the bows. How do we add weight painting here in Blender? We have to first select the armature that we're using. Secondly, select with shift click the mesh and now we can switch on the top left to weight paint mode. Now in this mode, we can control shift click and it's going to be switching between the bones. Now, once we have done that, hopefully, because this tends to glitch a bit, there we go, it is working. We can now start painting. So now that means that I painted on this bone, which if we look at the top left, neck one now has this weight painting. Control is going to do the reverse. I'm going to remove all the weight painting. And that's that. So again, I'm not going to start doing weight painting now because it takes some time. So just so you know, again, since we're doing it with the preview mesh that does not contain a neck, the weight painting is not taking the neck into consideration. There is a way of merging the head of the metahuman to the body of the metahuman. I will be making another video on that because it's extremely long and cumbersome. 
So let's do the final step here. And in the outliner that Blender has, the final step is we need to grab our claw and we need to drag it on top of root. And you can see the little pop-up that says move inside collection control to link or shift to parent. We're going to shift parent to the root. And that's all. Now that we have this, we are going to click and control click the root. And we are going to export this as an FBX. So important things on the FBX export, we got to do selected objects only, and we got to do armature and mesh only. Then we scroll down and in the animation, we turn it off, no animation. And then we open up the armature and we do not add leaf bones. We export everything as is. We're going to go into FBX exports here, Blender exports, and you can see that I have it already exported up here. We're just gonna step on it, it's fine, so you can see that the process works. Export FBX. We're going to jump back into Unreal here, and we have Blender transfer. We know that this one is the Blender one. We are going to add the new one in here so you guys can see it working. And I'm bringing it over, and here we are. So we're going to drag and drop, import, translating the source file. We're going to leave everything as is. It usually does a good job. Uh, I had to change the uniform transform for a previous import, so make sure that this is at 1. Everything at default, we can reset uh, to default, and we're going to import. And this is what we get. We get a couple of issues in the import. That's usually the smoothing groups, which we don't care about. Smoothing groups, no problems here. And here we are. This is the cloth that was skin transferred from Blender. And let's confirm that it works. We could very, uh, very quickly fix the materials. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. Let's actually make sure that in a cinematic, this does work. So let's get rid of these guys here. And let's bring our new piece of cloth. And again, <clears throat> this one was made through the metahuman skeleton, but it brought in a new skeleton. It doesn't mean that it is using the same one. It is exactly the same. It looks the same, but it doesn't mean that it's using the same one. So what we need to do is in the skeleton itself, we need to go into retarget manager and down here in the manage compatible skeletons, we are going to add two skeletons, the metahuman base skeleton. And then I'm just going to add echo because echo has a couple of animations. These three are the same exact skeleton. So now if we go out here, we should now have, yes, there we go. We have a walk animation, walk forward, and we can see that this is working. Again, same issue we experienced with Unreal as, uh, uh, as the neck doesn't have any weight painting and we need to manually do that, but this works perfectly fine. And now that we've done that, we can do the same thing we did in Unreal in our previous video where we added this to the Unreal Blueprint. So let's go ahead and to the MetaHuman Blueprint. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to edit the Blueprint. We're going to go into the viewport. We're going to delete the rows so you guys can see that we're doing it live here at the same time and it works. So this is the piece of cloth that we need. So we're going to click on the body. We're going to add a new skeletal mesh. And we're going to call this robes. We have it clicked in here. Control space bar to bring it back up or down. So we're going to add it. And this one, we're going to move it slightly down. And there we go. I think it was previously moved due to the other asset. We can move this in Blender too. Once we are doing the transfer, if we want, we can move it down a little bit and then apply transformation. So this doesn't happen. And then what we're going to do is simply going again into the construction script. We do need to do this again. We do need to make sure that we are set leader posts and that the robes are our target. Once we've done that, we're going to compile. Hopefully nothing blows up. There we go. We save. We're going to go here. And now that we have this guy here, we're going to add him to our sequencer. And you can very quickly confirm that the control rig is effectively working and that we can also add any animation that the body has. Walk animation. And there we go. And that's it. So that is the Blender workflow for transferring. Again, the pros of the Blender. Blender is awesome. Learning Blender is going to be great. Great way painting tools. It's a more straightforward with the painting because it works better than Unreal and it's less glitchy. 
And then we have the cons, obviously. It requires a little bit of knowledge in external software. It's a longer process, and it does show some glitches on the waiting in the um, once we moved the arm, you saw that there were some glitches. The one best thing about doing this in Blender is that we are able to, if we go into Blender, and let's say our mesh actually does not have the positioning that we need. Let's say our mesh is on a different position. We can go here in sculpting in Blender and Blender has a couple of very, very cool tools that we can use, which are called Pose. Now the Pose tool is right now letting us, if we move and probably Pose Origin Offset, we can extend that a little bit and then we can push the IK to one more. It's gonna be extending that. No, we're gonna leave this to one, but the origin offset, we're gonna move it to make it bigger. So essentially, what we can start doing is moving this so it fits the correct position. We can do this, we'll do radius, a bigger radius, there we go, something like this. You can see that now we can start to bend the arm in the position that we need with much more ease than Unreal. And in here we could do a grab we could do a grab, for example, we can do this one, grab, and we can start moving this piece of cloth inside. So we can match it better to, let's say we have an APOS asset uh, and we got to bend it. We can sculpt it. We can do a lot of work here in Blender that in Unreal is very, very cumbersome. And there are no sculpting tools whatsoever in Unreal that are going to help you this, uh, this far. So that is the biggest pro of the process in Blender that we can use it to modify the aspect of our static mesh. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Again, the previous video explains this entirely in Unreal. And then there's a two other videos that explain if you have an alternate skeleton and if you're using a UE5 skeleton. In the next video, we are going to take a look at Chaos Cloth Assets, simulations, and how to add simulations to any of these that currently do not have any. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.